Hey folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome to another tutorial on Unity 3D, where we make a base building game as part of our so-called Project Porcupine. Now, in the last episode, we started working on what I'm calling installed objects, which are, say, the types of objects that are sort of permanent fixtures or semi-permanent fixtures in your base. Walls, doors, furniture, that sort of thing. And we started developing this installed object class. Now, in the last episode, I actually broke one of my rules, especially for tutorials, in that I try to be as explicit and clear as possible. And these two functions over here, these two constructors, are not it. This is actually double plus on good. Um, effectively, the functions are okay. But I don't like the fact that I'm I'm overloading the object constructor here because it makes the usage a little bit unclear. And I think we'd be better off. And I mean, if I'm having to like make some little notes like this, um, terrible. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these constructors with static functions that do exactly the same thing. So this is going to be a static public function that returns an installed object, but is going to be called something like create object or create prototype because it's going to be called from somewhere else in the program as something like this installed object dot create prototype da, 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 and then we pass it some stuff in there otherwise it is going to be exactly the same as before and I think that's going to be much better and over here we're going to have static public it's going to return an installed object as well, which is fine. And this is going to be called something like place object. It takes in a prototype and asks a tile for the destination of where we're going to place this object. I suppose I could call it install object, but I think that it might be just a little too confusing to go installed object dot install object. So installed object dot place, maybe something like that. Or place instance might even be the better way to word it. Right, because this is explicitly giving you a prototype, and this is an instance. Now, both the prototype and the instance are both just installed objects, and I still think that's a good idea. I don't think we need a second class for the prototype version of the object versus the actual sort of installed version of it. Maybe later on we will break it into two, but I think for now it's going to be okay. Now, and also, early on, we are going to be executing create prototype directly and just feeding it in some dummy data that we're going to do probably in this episode, actually. But in the future, what's going to happen with this, I mean, this function can stay the same, but instead of being like being executed from some hard coded function somewhere is most likely going to be executed after we parse an XML or JSON file or CSV or whatever format we decide to use for our data. So I think I'm going to be a lot happier about this. Now we do have to, um, we can't, I'm a lot happier about this, but we can no longer use this. Since this is a static function, we don't have an automatic object over here. So we're going to have to create our own one. So um, here, so we're creating a new one equals new installed object. Now, because we don't have a constructor in here anymore, we just have this default constructor that is available for us. That doesn't take any parameters, just creates a single um, instance of installed object with everything with just, you know, their default values that they get here. So these are basically all gonna be nulls, zeros, or blank strings, for example, because that's the, the default sort of dummy version of these guys. And then we can just boop, 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 boop. And then of course we have to make sure to return boop like that. Here we go. So we create a new instance of installed object we set the parameters exactly as before and then return it. So it's not a constructor, but it's effectively doing the same thing. And this can be called because it's static. It doesn't need an instance of one of these yet, which is a class function. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. So again, we're going to instantiate a new copy of the object. But as before, we're going to be copying uh, the fields from the prototype into this newly installed object. Uh, we're also going to set a tile, which is different. And we still have something to do over here. Fix me! I love how that highlights there. And then we're going to return our object. There we go. Same as before. Now, there is one little issue here. This, let me hit F8 to make sure this actually compiles. Oh, no, we did get an error. Oh, yes, this is not a keyword. Thank you. So, F8. Uh, so, what you can do is you can go build. F8 is just a shortcut to build all over here. It's the same as if I just tabbed over to Unity, which is what I, I normally do over here. It compiles in Unity at that point and then shows it up in the... Um, the console here, but it's slightly faster to just be able to do a quick compile over here and see if there's any errors. So again, you'll notice that I can use this constructor over here. 
If you don't have a constructor in a class, it creates a dummy uh, constructor for you. It actually looks, well, exactly like this. Installed object, and it's empty. This is literally what this does, effectively. If I copy this out, again, we can use this constructor. The downside is, this means if we went somewhere else, like let's say we went into our world class over here, right? Our world class, I guess I could have opened it there. And somewhere in the code, I decide, hey, I want installed object obj equals new installed object. Do that, I'm gonna hit F8, build, 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 build successful. It's perfectly fine with letting us do that. Well. I don't want to ever do this. I don't want to ever create a direct copy of installed object because I think, um, because what is this? This is an empty uh, installed object with none of the parameters set. I don't think we'll ever need to use this. Maybe we will later on, we'll change it. But for now, I think the assumption would be like, this would be a bad thing to allow. So we don't want to allow you to create these installed objects in the rest of the program, but we do obviously still need some sort of constructor over here. So the solution, will be to make a protected version of this. As soon as you have any constructor in your class, the default one no longer gets auto-generated. So now we have a constructor. It happens to be an empty constructor. There's nothing that happens in it, but it's protected, which means we can only run it from inside of this class and the children of this class. So now if I go and hit compile, we're gonna get an error because in my world script over here, I'm no longer allowed to instantiate this object. The only way to get a new installed object instead over here is to do installed object dot either create prototype or place instance. Uh, place instance requires a prototypical object first. So obviously, yeah, we're gonna have to create a prototype first. And actually let's go ahead and do that because this is gonna be our, our dummy object that we're gonna get started with here. So this is gonna be our wall installed I don't know, or wall prototype, right? This is not gonna stick around. Well, we're just gonna do this for an example here. So we're gonna create a new prototype. Oh, I hate that the autocomplete doesn't stay up unless I do that, there we go. Oh, and then it pops out again. Well, that's disappointing. Okay, there we go. So it wants a string for the object type. The object type is going to be the sort of internal ID for this object. Um, Early on, we will probably also use this to display the name of the object maybe as part of a tooltip. I suspect in the future, we will break this down into uh, two separate strings. One will be the object type and another one will be used for the object name. But for now, we'll use the same thing for both and then we'll make adjustments later on. Heck, we're probably gonna want text fields for um, descriptions and other things like that. But for now, that's gonna be good. So our object type is just gonna be called wall. That sounds pretty good. The movement cost has to be set now. Now, the movement cost, so normally, normal objects, normal tiles, normal all those things will have a movement cost of one. And I believe we've said that it's sort of a percentage-based thing. I'd, I'd have to double check. But we also said, if you set your movement cost to zero, it means this tile is impassable. There's no such thing as a tile that doesn't cost you anything to move through. It's basically representative of the time needed to walk through this object. So this is impassable. Did I spell that correctly? think so? You know, every now and again, you get a word, and then you Google it, and you're like, no, it's passable. Right, impassable, not impossible. All right, so we've got that. Uh, what are the other parameters here? Let's mouse over over here. Width and height. So we can just leave those as the default, but let's go ahead and explicitly say, so this is the width, and this is the height. Right now, we do not have support for anything other than this basic size. Um, so in fact, over here we can say to do um, implement larger objects because we don't we don't do that yet. It's just a placeholder. I think there's going to be another placeholder uh, function. Oh oh, to do implement object rotation. Now for walls, walls don't have a rotation. So we can just ignore that for now. But later on, we are gonna want the ability to rotate objects and also to have objects that aren't just one by one. But we're starting with the wall because it's simple. Okay, that's fine. We do have to finish this off. And honestly, this is just this. I can't see my cursor, there it is. Um, this assumes we are one by one. All right, so the idea here is we are going to have to tell the tile that we're in that it has an installed object. 
that's going to be important so that we can't put multiple installed objects in there and just to make sure that everything keeps track of itself. Now, right now this is redded out and the reason for it is I believe that that is a protected thing or it doesn't exist at all. Let's go ahead and see what our tile object looks like. So we've got installed object over here. Um, and yeah, because we haven't defined it to be uh, public, it is by default protected. And that's okay. How do we want to deal with it? Do we want to be able to write to it directly? I mean, we can wrap it in a, in a property. That would be fine. But we might want to go and make a function. I think it's probably better to have a function. Just to make it explicit. Um, does it have to return anything? Could return a boolean that tells you if it was successful or not. Sure, why not? That, that's effectively free. Um, something like assign installed object? It's kind of wordy. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm 100% keen on that. Well, you know what? How about place object? That's exactly the same name as we use here. Or it's place instance. Hmm. But we don't want to call it directly. I mean, we're not calling this with a prototype. We're calling this with the actual instance. Hmm. I don't know. I guess it's six of one, half dozen the other. It's my theory if you ever spend too long thinking about one thing and you can't decide between two options, they're probably both good. So let's keep it with the function. Okay, so it's going to ask for uh, an installed object. Um, this is going to be object instance. We're going to call it that to try to emphasize the fact that it's not a prototype. And I don't think it needs any other parameters. So first of all, presumably we could uh, place send a null in here, right? So if object instance is equal to null, then that's fine. You know, we are uninstalling whatever was here before. So we set our object instance, or sorry, our installed object to be equal to null, and we can just return true right away. This worked. Everything is awesome. Okay. Then I want another check. If so, if we weren't past the null. Right? So if we were past the null, we do this, and then we return right away. So at this point, ob instance isn't null. Right? At that point. So then I want to check, hey, do we already have an object? If our own installed object not equals null, then um, right now we don't have a way to debug or to send a, an error message anywhere um, other than the uh, unity log, but we might want to change that later. But let's say log error. trying to assign an installed object to a tile that already has one. We're almost certainly going to run into this issue a lot later on when we implement, when we start to implement uh, multi-tile objects, right? Tiles that are more than just one by one, almost certainly will start to sort of muck around over here because what's going to happen is here, instead of assigning ourselves to one tile, we're going to assign ourselves to multiple tiles and we'll probably, you know, fail to check properly. So we'll do that and then we'll return false. Okay, so we've put a log to the error and then we return false and we don't do it. It does mean at this point that, you know, something will just be floating in the ether right now. There'll be an extra object that's been already instantiated over here, but hasn't been assigned to a tile. So we'll have to fix that when we get back. That's okay. And then assuming we get here, at this point, everything's fine. So we just set our installed object to be equal to the obj instance. And we return true. That's probably all we have to do at this point. Okay, so we got our function. You know what? Because I'm doing all these little extra checks and there's some sort of heft to it, I'm happy to be doing it as a function as opposed to sort of a, a setter function over here where you can do, I mean, it's just a function. You can do all these things, but I don't like to have oversized setters. I don't like setters to necessarily do that much extra stuff. It just doesn't feel quite right. So over here, you're calling place object and we're passing it this. So we're only passing it one, but we should check if place object is equal to null now or um, false. Now, every time I do this, there is always a discussion in the chat about, well, why can't you just do this if not place object? Absolutely. Literally does exactly the same thing. I think 
Um, I, I'm not 100% sure about exactly what the compiler here does, but I suspect that in the end, the actual mas machine code between both of those should be exactly the same. This should not be any slower than the other one. Yeah, you have to type an extra six characters, but the extra amount of clarity is significant, especially in tutorials. Um, a lot of people, first of all, miss the exclamation mark, so they may not type it, and then all of a sudden their code doesn't work like the code is supposed to in the tutorial. And it's not just in tutorials. Later on, we're going to have to come by and read this um, code again if we're trying to debug something. And it's very easy when you're scrolling down to not see the little exclamation mark. So it's much, much clearer if you're explicitly checking to see if it's false. Sometimes I'll even do this with true. It's less, less important because I assume if I'm doing this is if place object, so I'm assuming truth, which is also one of the reasons why I don't like the exclamation mark is because if I see this little simple um, construction over here, I'm usually assuming that we're testing for positivity. This makes it explicit like, no, no, I'm checking to see if the thing is false. So if false, for some reason, we weren't able to place our object in this tile probably it was already occupied. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to return null. Do not return our newly instantiated object. Instead it will be garbage collected. Obviously, we don't want to, whatever calls this, we don't want to return it an object that didn't actually get installed properly in a tile. So just return null, and this thing over here that we created uh, will automatically be collected. Next time the garbage collector runs, this object will be destroyed, so it's not going to sit around taking up a whole bunch of memory. So I think we have everything set up in this area of code to actually place our objects. All right, so going back to the world over here. So I created this one example of this prototype, which does need a semicolon. And also, let's do a quick uh, compile to make sure I haven't missed anything. Like perhaps an extra comma. There we go. I like that when you create arrays, you tend to be able to still have the extra comma in the last entry. But you can't do that for um, functions because it's thinking that there's some extra parameter there. Okay, so this is sort of what our wool prototype is going to look like. Um, but obviously, if we just you know, instantiate this object here within this function, then it's just going away at the end of the function. So that's not what it's going to be. Instead, we're going to have, we're going to have a dictionary, which means we need to actually use generic. I wish this was just the default in Unity. You can change, there's a template file you can change that um, you can, so you can set what this default is. The problem is it gets overwritten every time you update Unity, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. But yeah, I wish dot .generic were the version instead of just dot .collections. Anywho, in here, so this is in our world, right, which has tiles. We are also going to have, this might go to a different area later on. We might have a dedicated uh, class to manage our prototypes or some damn thing. But for now, I think it makes sense to have it in the world. We're going to have a dictionary. It's going to be keyed with strings. String is going to be the index, the lookup. And the data is going to be installed object. And these are going to be our installed object prototypes are going to be in here. So now in our world constructor, actually I'll probably make a separate function for that, but hold on tight. We're going to say installed object prototypes is equal to a new dictionary like that. And we'll, um, we're basically going to stuff this into here, basically by doing something like this. So installed object prototypes dot add, the string will be wall and then we'll pass the wall prototype. There we go. So now we have this dictionary that contains all of our possible installed object prototypes. Right now it's just wall, but later on it will have door, sofa, bed, um, a a oxygen generator, all those sorts of things. Now, and that, that will work. This is, this is functional, but I don't like to have it here as part of the constructor and these things necessarily hard coded this way. So we're actually going to create a couple more functions over here and just for convenience. I will create it right underneath this constructor for now. We might rearrange this file later on to organize things better. And again, we might farm these functions out to a separate class. If we decide that the world class just gets a little bit too crowded, that'll be fine. But we're going to make a function here. It's going to be protected by default. Um, 
and it's going to be called It's going to be protected by default, right? I'm not crazy? Yeah, no, I don't think I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Anyway, um, it's going to be called create object prototypes. Actually, it's installed object prototypes, which I realize is, is wordy, but it's also supremely clear. So this stuff basically moves into here. And then we call that. There we go. It's nice to keep each individual function as short as possible. Uh, it really does help a lot of clarity in debugging because you can see exactly what something is supposed to do. Now, we're further going to break this down as in that we're going to create another function over here. It's going to return an installed object. And it's going to be create installed object prototype. Hmm. Those are pretty damn similar. S versus no S. I guess it'll have to do. We're really these aren't going to get called other than from these functions, but I got to admit I'm not I'm not in love with the function names in terms of sort of clarity. I do like wordiness, but that's maybe getting a little too far. Anywho, this thing here is going to take probably just these parameters. It's effectively going to be the same as the constructor over here. Do I need this extra level of indirection? Maybe it's fine that I just created in here. I mean, the idea is to do this, <clears throat> basically. So that, whoa, what's with the screen movement? There we go. Um, so that here we just say create install object prototype multiple times, passing it the parameters of the object prototype we're trying to create. Hmm. And obviously, we'd be passing it some, some parameters here to populate this. It could be that this just isn't doing enough. I guess let's not worry about it for now, because again, later on, all this is going to change anyway, because we are going to, um, we're going to be reading this from some sort of config file. Now, we don't actually have to store this in a temporary variable here. I mean, there's not much overhead to doing it that way, but we could save some steps. by doing the, no, we still need another parentheses over here. There we go. Something like that, right? So installed object prototypes dot add, we, we have to give it the string that is going to be the index or the key. And then we, then um, actually give it a value. So this is the key. This is the value. The value is going to be the installed object returned by create prototype. There we go. And then we can have a string of these later on um, when we add doors and sofas and whatnot. And again, later on, this will all be replaced with something that reads maybe from some sort of data file. But that will be that. Now, if we try to compile. Okay, no syntax errors. If we try to run it, this will execute. We won't see anything on screen, but it'll let us know if there was any like glaring logic errors. Not so far. Okay. The, the errors here are just because I'm dragging out of range. Uh, we could potentially hide these errors. No, I think it's probably good that we have them in there. So anytime that you drag and you go outside of the bounds, then it's going to yell at you, which is fine. Okay. Um... So good, we've got that. Now, how do we actually get that to build? Because we have this prototype in our database. And we have this button here that says build wall, but it doesn't do anything right now. Actually, that's not true. It actually just links to the old build floor. So instead, what we're going to have to do uh, is, so what do you actually run? Oh, it's the mouse controller. Yeah, which is, this is pretty typical for me. This is rapidly becoming um, increasingly misnamed. It's not just controlling the mouse, it's also building everything. And I think this will definitely have to get split into a couple of different classes later on, just to keep everything clear. Like, you're looking at a thing called mouse controller, but it's actually the thing that builds all your tiles. Obviously, it's not quite right. They do have to interact, because the mouse tells the tile building system where to actually stick the tiles. But we'll, we'll end up renaming something for that later on. Anywho, 
Um, so we have we have a button called set mode build floor. Oh, and we have one set mode build wall. Instead of set mode build wall, I'm going to have it called set mode build object. And again, it may be possible that we rename the installed objects to something else. And I want installed objects to be different than the loose objects that are just sitting on the ground. Maybe we'll call them... Maybe we should call them furniture and inventory? Those might not be two bad names. They might be clear. I'm not 100% keen on the, let's just inventory. But the idea is an inventory object is something that just sits on the floor and is some raw goods. Where's furniture? I mean, are people okay with calling walls furniture? Because that would be maybe a hell of a lot better and a lot shorter to write. We'll see. Anyway, um, so this function is going to be called build object. Build installed object, because that is the name we're using now. And we're going to request a string. And the string is going to be our object type. That's all we're asking for is an object type here. So build mode is objects equals true. And just like over here, we keep track of what the build mode tile is. We'll have a string, which is build mode object type, which doesn't have to be set to anything. Whoops, capitalization is off. There we go. So we've got the string and we are going to tell it that we are in object building mode and our type is this, object type. And then, so here I had a note that we're just gonna assume walls, but we're not just gonna assume walls. We know what object we wanna build. We have a keyword for it, and the world has a dictionary of here of installed object prototypes, which right now has one object called wall. So in our user interface here, the build wall button um, should, I'm gonna have to recreate it, hold on. Let me take something different and then go back to build installed object, there we go. So now it actually accepts a parameter over here. So this will be a string that gets sent to that function. So we're going to send it the word wall, which is the ID of the object we're trying to build, right? So build installed object requires a string. We're going to send it the string wall. That is going to get called down here, set build, set mode, build installed object. It's going to get passed wall. So it sets the build mode to true. It stores the wall string into there. And then over here, we're going to do something like, well, I don't know. We have a tile. Do we just tell the world that we're ready to build something? I mean, I guess so. We've got a tile already, but we can say something like world dot um, place installed object. So we pass it our, our phrase, which is build mode object type, and then we give it a destination tile. I mean, do we really need anything else? No, that's probably all the info we need for the world to be able to place an installed object in this particular spot. That seems reasonable, right? I think so. Um, I mean, we can always go the other way. We can tell the tile to put a thing there, you know, so we could say t something like t dot place installed object. There's, there, you know, we've got a bunch of different ways for where we can call it. For now, we'll assume this and that'll be fine. I mean, this is the thing that's actually got the dictionary of objects. So it's probably the fair thing to call. Anyway, I'm just going to comment this out now so that it compiles without any errors. Indeed, we are there. We're going to have to put a cut in this episode, but in the next one, we're going to go ahead and get this working. This, the initial thing to add the installed object to the world is going to be easy because we basically have done all the work right? Installed object is already responsible for creating an instance of it, placing in a tile, doing all those things. So that function um, here is going to be tri trivial. But then after that, what we're going to have to do is make sure that just like our floor tiles, um, our installed object tiles get some sort of sprite in the game world. And also, yes, at some point we will be doing something with, with the background so that, you know, well, this doesn't happen. I promise. We'll, we'll get to it. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye. Thank you very much to all the November supporters over at patreon.com slash quill18creates and to these mic check level supporters. We've got Alex, we've got Wes Oldenbiving, we've got Andrew, we've got Craig Mortel. 
Philip Nichols, Neil Blakely Milner, we've got Speedy Savant, we've got Valiant Cake Fiend, Radel Del Peso, Aaron Toivsen, maybe? Marius Field Vold, Tim Julian Auger Lafon, Steven Stager, or Stagger, we've got Michael McClintock, and Bunny, and also everyone who's just watched, shared, favorited, subscribed these videos. You really make a massive difference when it comes to uh, keeping these series going and making everything just interesting and awesome. And just thanks for watching and thanks for supporting. See you next time, folks.